All right, it's, uh, I'd like to call the Budget Review Committee to order. It's June 9th, 2021, and we are holding this meeting via teleconference. Uh, as chairman of the Budget Review Committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. To access Zoom, please refer to the agenda or the city's website for the meeting link. To join by phone, dial 1-929-205-6099. The meeting ID is 893-5561-8849, and the passcode is 869223. The public may also view the meeting via channel 16. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through public postings. Instructions have also been provided on the City of Nashville's website and publicly noticed at City Hall and Nashville Public Library. If anyone has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 16, please call 603-589-3329 and they will help you connect. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods I just mentioned, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by a roll call vote. We will start the meeting by having the clerk call a roll. When each member states their presence, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Alderman O'Brien. Alderman at large, Shoshana Kelly. Alderman at large, Michael B. O'Brien Sr. is present and I'm in the chamber. Alderman at large, Laurie Wilshire. I'm here. Alderman Ernest Jetty. I'm uh, home alone and I can hear the proceedings. Alderman Jan Schmidt. I am present alone and uh, can hear everyone. Alderman at large, Ben Clemens. And Alderman Richard A. Dowd. I'm present, I'm in the chamber. We have one, two, three, four. We have five out of the seven present. We have a quorum. Also in attendance? Yes, also in attendance, we have Sarah Marshawn, Community Development Division Director, William McKinney, Building Manager, Nelson Ortega, Code Enforcement Manager, Deb Chisholm, Environmental uh, Scientist, Waterways Manager, Matt Sullivan, Planning Manager, Carrie Sheena, Urban Programs Manager, and Louise Woodworth, Transit Finance Coordinator. Okay, first order of business uh, for the meeting will be public comment on items to be addressed in this budget meeting. Is there anyone, members of the public that would like to speak? Seeing and hearing no one, we'll move on. Communications? There are none. Unfinished business? There is none. New business resolutions? There is none. New business ordinances? None. Tabled in committee? Uh, what we have tabled in committee uh, is, uh, the let's, yeah, the budget, yeah. I would like to make a motion to take from the table R-21142, uh, by roll call. Please call the roll. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. Alderman O'Brien votes yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Mr. Chairman, it's five yeas, zero nays. Motion carries. Our 21142 is now back on the table. Yep. This evening, we will be discussing the Community Development Division. Um, and I, I think before we get started, Director Marshan, you wanna give us an overview? 
Certainly. Thank you and good evening, everybody. Sarah Marchant, the Community Development Division Director. Um, I am here to introduce my team tonight, but starting out, wanted to say that the division met the 0% percent directive going forward. We also had some very significant accomplishments in FY21 that the team will talk more about, but those include reinstatement of fixed route service after COVID service in place, um, a $4.7 million lead grant, a transition to new permitting and inspection software, building of a landlord emergency response database, and preparation for the replacement of the Jackson Falls turbine, just to name a few. And we also have two new faces in the team around the camera tonight. Um, the first is Matt Sullivan, who I think you've all had the privilege to meet already, who started with us in September. And to correct the record as well, we have Camille Correa, our brand new transit administrator, who started four days ago, five days ago. And so we are so thankful she's here tonight. Um, and I would like to give her the opportunity just to give a quick background on where she came from and um, her role in transit. So Camille, if you could introduce yourself. Good evening, I'm Camille Sterling, excuse me, Camille Correa. I'm known as Camille Sterling in the state of North Carolina and had for years introduced myself as that. And here in Nashua, I am uh, Camille Correa and happy to be here. I have really enjoyed participating in the uh, different meetings with the city of Nashua, getting to know people, and also interacting with all the different divisions and the people within the city. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and to run the transit system. My experience in transit is approximately 20 years. I've been an administrator. Uh, I've also used transit myself personally when I was going to school and also as I grew up. So I'm very familiar with the ins and outs of a bus system from the user perspective and also from the administrative perspective as I've overseen both operations and the administrative side. I'm very familiar with compliance as well. And so I'm happy to be here with the skills that I have learned over the years and look forward to meeting all of you and hopefully seeing you on board the bus. Thank you. Thank you, Camille, and welcome aboard. Um, so with that, that is a very short overview. I assumed you wanted to go through the agenda in the order listed and I will turn it over to the team to talk about all the great things they've done and the things we plan for the year ahead. Okay, the first department we will address is 153, building inspection. The revenue is on page 44 and the appropriations are on page 230. I believe the appropriations are pretty level, but I'll let the, uh, who's going to be discussing? I think that's going to be uh, Bill McKinley. Yeah, he's on mute. Uh, Bill, can you take, yeah, there you go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you and good evening. Thank you, Alderman Dowd and the members of the committee. Uh, I'm Bill McKinney. I am the building official for the city of Nashua and manage the Department of Building Safety. Uh, the responsibilities of the Department of Building Safety are to administer the um, multiple building codes and life safety codes that are adopted by the city of Nashua and the state of New Hampshire. Our, our department is also responsible for conducting all the inspections to for those codes. And we also work very closely with our code enforcement department, our Nashua Fire Rescue Department, uh, and our health department to ensure a safe and resilient community for Nashua. I would like to say that, you know, COVID has been a very difficult time for many of us. And uh, I'm very proud of my team for being able to uh, maintain our high level of service for the community. And we had some slight reductions in being able to uh, do inspections initially, but, uh, but we adopted more technologies into our program and inc including um, remote inspections um, that allowed for residents and contractors to work with tablets and, and any of the uh, social, any of the medias that are out there that we could use and our inspectors could be guided, would guide them through that inspection, you know, remotely 
through either Zoom or WebEx or whatever platform we could use. So I'm very proud that our team made, made that adjustment and that really increased our level of service for the community. With that, as you stated, I will go to our revenue projections on page 44 and you'll see that we do have, um, we are projecting some increases in revenue in, in coming in FY22. Um, that is based upon, you know, increased construction activity in the city, um, some more sizable projects that are coming to the city, and with the recent adoption of the um, building fees that we um, was supported by the Board of Aldermen to increase our fees. So that will reflect in the FY22 budget. Um, and I'll entertain any questions you may have on the revenues, if there are any. Okay, I see that your revenues are, are pretty high through the end of March for this year. Um, any projection on where you'll be by the end of the June? I don't have a true projection by the end of June, but currently we are roughly $114,800 above our projections for FY21. So that's a uh, 125% okay. of what we projected. Good. I think the rest of everything is, is pretty flat, but I, I you're... Um... I noticed that the plumbing permits are down, or I'm sorry, they're up slightly uh, from last year. It is for some reason that they aren't increasing as high as some of your others? Yeah, we, we, we look at our projections over, over a uh, four year average. Um, plumbing stays relatively level. Um, it doesn't have the, uh, you know, in mechanical and electrical, there's a lot of um, repair and service work that happens that doesn't necessarily isn't as high a dollar value with plumbing. You know, a, a water heater is a certain amount, whereas with mechanical or electrical, the, those repairs can can, can get pretty expensive, um, depending upon the systems that they're they're replacing or or repairing. Okay. So, if there are there any questions on uh, revenue from the members of the committee? Seeing none, we'll jump to your appropriations on page 230. Okay, our pro appropriations, um, you'll see that, you know, our most significant increases is with salaries and, and um, benefits, um, which we really have no control over. Those, those are uh, contractual agreements between the city and our staff that are um, uh, union employees. Uh, we have had a slight increase to our communications and data line, and that is the only one. And that is that we found during the COVID time that we were providing better service with um, having our inspectors um, connected to uh, cellular phone service. Prior to that, we were using two-way radios. So now we're using a combination of two-way radios, uh, cellular phone service, texting, and um, tablets with um, direct data in the field. Okay, are there any questions on appropriations for the building inspection? Alderman Jetty? Uh, yes, just quickly, uh, with this increase in activity and, and your anticipated increase in, in revenue because of uh, anticipated increase in building, um, are, you, are you able to keep up with your current uh, Workforce. Yes, yeah, so our current workforce, I would say, is optimum right now. Um, we are we are at manageable levels when everyone is in. If we have someone that's out sick, or or has a vacation day, our, you know, our the rest of the staff works a little harder um, to keep up. So I, I would say that um, we are at optimum level right now, and we're providing a, a very high level of service to the city. And you're not getting complaints about people waiting too long to get inspections? We are still able to provide inspections within 24 hours of any request to our department. If you call uh, the day before, we'll get you onto our schedule and we will service. That's great to hear. Thank you very much. All set, Alderman Jenny? Yes, I am. 
Um, one question I have: Are you going to continue to to be using the uh, laptops or the or the iPads uh, when you're doing your inspections and connecting back to the office and uh, sort of expediting things that way and signing things off electronically? Yes, we, we've actually uh, brought a um, new permitting and, and inspection software online. Um, we continue to bring in more modules to that software, which will include a um, customer portal where customers can actually apply for permits and pay for permits online. Uh, we'll be able to do all of our inspections online and provide an email to those customers as, as far as the results of those inspections. We will continue to offer the remote virtual um, inspection program. I, I believe uh, strongly in that program is that is a great service to um, homeowners. Um, contractors have the ability to schedule the inspection the same day they're doing the work. They stay on the site. They do the remote virtual inspection with our, with our inspector who is in the office and the homeowner only has to take that one day off from work rather than the two that they would now. So it's a great service and we hope to continue it. Excellent. Are there any other questions for appropriations on building inspection? Seeing none. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. Next, we'll go to Department 155, Code Enforcement. Appropriations are on page 234. Good evening, this is Nelson Ortega, Code Enforcement Manager, City of Nashua. <clears throat> Our department, um, also for uh, Code AL's benefit, we investigate all of um, Nashua Housing Code uh, complaints in the city. We work closely with the Building Safety, the Fire Marshal also, along with the Health Department. Uh, and we assist other departments uh, if they feel that they need assistance with some sort of enforcement or, or uh, notice to go out, uh, as long as a, the department outside of community development makes first attempt to, to rectify a, a potential violation, uh, then we will assist them beyond that if they feel they need it. <clears throat> um, like, like, as Sarah had mentioned, we did have the, um, we started the program for uh, uh, registering landlords and property managers in the city of Nashua for rental units, uh, uh, not single family homeowners. Uh, that's done pretty well. Uh, we sent out close to 400, um, uh, 400, listen to me. <laughs> My fingers, I'll tell you otherwise. We sent out close to 4,000 uh, forms to property managers and landlords throughout the city. Uh, and we've, I'm glad to say that we've got over 85% response from, from these individuals. Uh, and now we are in the process of um, putting that information into Civica, which is our new software um, that we have. And uh, uh, all of code enforcement and, and individuals outside of our own department has assisted uh, in trying to put input that information into um, Civica. Uh, and we're now ready to actually, we actually have two training dates uh, uh, for the fire and police department because one of the main purpose for the function was so we can reach out to landlords and property managers after hours, uh, especially if a first responder shows up to a property and they, and they don't find a contact information. Uh, they used to call us, uh, but now they will have the ability to have a read only link to our program, our, our, our software, where they can go in, put the address, and it will show them who the property manager is, their contact information. Uh, it'll also show them who the owner is in the event that they can't get a hold of a property manager. So they're going to have uh, access to any information that we have uh, at their fingertips. So we have our first training on, on the 11th, Friday, uh, with the National PD, and on the 15th with fire dispatchers. So we're looking forward to that. And um, we're working along with Jason from IT and it's, it's, it's just going really great. Okay. Uh, so um, anything you'd like to tell us on appropriations? I know they're pretty flat from last year. Ours is, ours is again, as a building safety, our biggest increases in salaries and benefits. 
Um, other than that, everything else is very uh, right along the lines for what we needed. The only change I saw was mailing, which went up 500 bucks. Oh, yeah, that went up because of the uh, 4,000 pieces of mail we had to send out. <laughs> okay. uh, so, and, and this is something that we'll probably uh, once a year or every other year or as landlords move, uh, we'll probably now be able to narrow it down to those particular properties and send out a reminder email or notice if they don't have an email because there are individuals that don't have emails. Uh, so we can always, that, that's our way of keeping that up to date and as current as we can. Uh, so uh, it, it's, so the, our, our, uh, our postage may go up a little bit more for the, throughout the years, uh, but not, but we're hoping, hoping to be able to use um, the emails a lot easier. <laughs> Okay. Are there any other questions on appropriations for code enforcement? All, uh, Alderman, yes. Alderman Wilshire. Thank you. Nelson, I see on page 232 of the budget book, the uh, trees that were cut and then restacked on top of each other. That was um, South Nashua. I remember that. <laughs> um, Don't have I, it in front of you. That's okay. Okay, because I'm like, I don't have that page. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thanks. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Probably should get code involved in uh, the Edgewood Cemetery, too, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> Um, all right, thank you. Um, I don't think there are any additional questions from anyone, so thank you, Nelson. Thank you. All right, we'll move along to Department 170, Waterways, Hydroelectric Operations. The um, revenue is on page 44, and the appropriations are on page 238. Yes, hi, good evening. This is Deb Chisholm, Waterways uh, Manager. I have the uh, enviable job of trying to keep our waterways clean, uh, accessible, uh, safe, uh, and I'm also responsible for overseeing uh, the operation and maintenance of our two hydroelectric facilities. Um, so most of what you're going to see in front of you over the next couple of minutes what, relative to revenue and appropriations are hydroelectric only. Um, uh, Director Marchant has the, <coughs> uh, the unenviable task of managing all the rest of my expenses, um, including my labor. So that's all in uh, community development budget. But relative to the, uh, the revenues for hydroelectric, um, one of the downsides of that, uh, trying to estimate what that revenue is going to be every year is uh, a little bit challenging because it's very based on how much rainfall and snowfall we get over the year. Um, so you can see that our estimate for fiscal year 22 revenue is a little bit lower uh, than this year. I will let you in on a little secret that what you're seeing for um, revenues through March, uh, we've actually got some additional uh, flows going through both of our facilities. Um, so our revenues are really closer to about $800,000 uh, at this point. Um, and we've got um, a little bit more time during this fiscal year to be able to squeeze out a little bit more. Um, so fingers crossed, although with the amount of rain we've had, um, both this year and last year uh, were relatively low on rainfall. Um, our estimates are typically based on historical averages. And so um, each year that we have uh, less and less revenue, uh, it, it, that comes into the equation when we are calculating what we think the revenues might be for future years. So that would explain why our revenue uh, estimate is a little bit lower uh, for fiscal year uh, 22. Okay, any questions for hydroelectric operations revenue? Seeing no one, we'll go on to appropriations on page 238. 
So, uh, as you can see, it's um, the appropriations for fiscal year 2022 are um, they're pretty much the same. Uh, the increase really that it's about twelve hundred dollars, and it's really based on uh, our telephone expenses. Um, we need to keep both of those facilities. Um, I always ask them every year, but they always the Essex uh, uh, Power, who is our contractor that does the actual uh, maintenance and operation of both facilities. Uh, they tell me every year that we need to continue to have a landline. So as someone who does not have a landline at my home, uh, it always irks me a little bit that they still need one. But um, it's really from a safety standpoint um, to be able to make a phone call in an emergency uh, as needed uh, ha to have a landline available at both of those facilities. So um, that's really where that particular um, slight increase is for our budget for, for next year. And like I said, um, Director Marshan is really the one responsible for, for covering the costs on, on all the other stuff that we do in the waterways department, whether it's invasive species uh, management, um, hydroelectric, um, some of the hydroelectric uh, work that gets done um, also comes out of special uh, revenue accounts that we have put aside uh, because uh, when things break out there, it becomes expensive uh, quite quickly. Um, so I guess really not a lot new. We've got some, um, some new equipment going in at Jackson. So if you're gonna be eating at Margaritas uh, sometime later this summer, uh, don't be surprised if you see some huge heavy equipment going on out there. Uh, and for Mine Falls uh, Hydroelectric, we are in the process of renewing our license out there. So um, hopefully by the time the end of July rolls around, we will have submitted our final application for that. And fingers crossed, um, we can actually get started on our next 40 years of generating power there. So being in logistics for longer than I'd like to admit, um, the new, generator that's going in is something that we had designed and built it's much more maintainable we will have spares here in case it fails and it should run a lot more efficient and probably generate more power more electricity and and more uh, revenue hopefully uh, so we'll be interested in following that as it goes along so is that taken into account in the in your projections? The the money that we are using to do the uh, install of all the new equipment at Jackson was bonded. Bonded, yes. Uh, it, so that uh, that's the funds that we're focusing on um, relative to that. We also have um, our in our general fund uh, operation and maintenance. Um, we are using Essex Hydro and they have certainly played a major role in helping us to figure out um, the, the, what works best uh, because they're the ones that are operating the facility on a day-to-day -day basis. So they're the ones that are able to give us really the firsthand knowledge on, on what actually is working or will work best uh, with the new equipment. Okay, I was just sort of referring to the fact that I would assume maintenance costs should go down and and um, efficiencies should should increase, but uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see and, and and judge that once it's running. Well, I think you're absolutely right. Um, if we can keep that uh, that new turbine running more often than what ended up happening with our uh, our old equipment where it was breaking down frequently, um, then we'll certainly be ahead of the game. But also note that uh, some of the expenses that are included in that um, operating and maintenance services line item uh, also has to do with uh, fish passage, which is a critical piece of operating a hydroelectric facility at a dam. Okay, thank you. Any You're other welcome. questions for, for uh, hydroelectric operations? No? Thank you very much, Deb. Let's see. So, next department is um, Community Development 181, revenue on page 45 and appropriations on 242. Yes, good evening again. Thank you, Sarah Marshall. Um, 
the community development department, <laughs> the division and the department, um, is, um, has been working on some major projects this year. Um, we don't actually have um, revenue. The revenue is actually the same pages as the building department and planning and zoning. So community development itself does not have a revenue line. Uh, but the division has worked on some major projects, including the invasives that Deb was talking about um, and several very large grants that um, we have secured in partnership with other divisions, specifically the transit center rehab, which the construction on that should be starting next month. The East Hollis Street Rail Trail, which did have some setbacks due to COVID and some environmentals, but we should be under construction next spring. Um, as of just, I think, two weeks ago, the lighting was completed on the Cotton Transfer Bridge. If any of you have had a chance to see that beautiful bridge and how it's all lit up now and some of the lighting on the north side of the Nashua River. Um, and for the first time, some of the sculptures that the city has through the International Sculpture Symposium are now lit along the trail so we can really enjoy them. So I encourage you to check those out. Um, and in addition, the biggest project of the year has been the Imagine Nashua, the city's um, master plan, first time in 20 years. So that's been a pretty massive project. We've actually had phenomenal turnout on Zoom meetings. Um, and we've started to have some in-person sessions as well, but we'll be wrapping that up this summer and bringing it to you for adoption. So we don't have anything on the revenue side, but I'd be more than happy to talk to you about the appropriation side. Okay. So the um, budget is, um, the changes are based largely on um, just salaries and wages. Um, to meet the directive, we did reduce the um, other contracted services line. That line does include um, less money for invasive, which is where we pay for the matching funds for the aquatic invasive species that is through the Nashua River. Um, we were awarded a larger grant this year than we have been in the past from New Hampshire DES. So that was able to help us reduce our match a little bit. And in addition, um, every other year we do the mill pond and canal, and next year we will not be doing the mill pond and canal. So it's a slightly smaller area. So that is what has helped us to be able to meet um, a reduction this year. Okay. So. Are there any questions relative to community development department appropriations? Alderman Jetty. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. In the Director Marchant, uh, when you talked about uh, reducing the uh, other contracted services on um, almost in half, and you say you're not going to treat the mill pond or the canal. Um, I'm concerned that um, of the effect that that's going to have. Is is, is uh, are, we, are we going to be okay? I mean, the canal is already uh, pretty. Uh, I don't know. If, it's pretty green. I don't know if it's what's what's what causes that. Whether it's uh, an invasive or whether it's natural or algae or or some some something else but uh it, sure. it uh, can you talk i can about explain that? so the invasive aquatic treatments are based on um the river management plan that has been done and the river management plan for the, for the canal and the mill pond only requires treatment every other year and that has been the case for a very long time um and so the um We've actually had tremendous success at reducing the aquatic invasive species in that area, and that every other year is more of a maintenance than a um, than a large eradication program. Unlike the Nashua River, where we're still in an eradication program, we haven't gotten to more of a maintenance stage. So um, the green that you see is more of a naturally curling algae, and that certainly is something concerning, but it's not treatable by this invasive, what we would be doing with the invasive species. Okay, so so the uh, you you were planning on not doing that this year anyway. It's not a cost saving measure. It's part of a plan. Just got lucky. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That's good to know. Thank you. Hey, that's it. All, all set, Alderman Jenny. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Anyone else to have any questions for the community development department? 
Seeing none, thank you, Director Marshan. Next, we will go to planning and zoning, which is Department 182, revenue on page 45, and the uh, appropriations on 245. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name is Matt Sullivan. I'm the planning department manager for the city. Uh, the department is a team of seven members, including myself, and we're focused really on two primary tracks, and that are, those are supporting the planning and zoning functions of the city, uh, particularly through providing staff support to various boards and committee that are, committees that are responsible for implementing the goals of the city's master plan, which is Director Marshand mentioned just a few moments ago, is currently under the process of, or in the process of being updated. Specifically, that manifests itself through our support to uh, the planning board, the zoning board, the historic district commission, the conservation commission, and of course the capital improvement committee, which provides a capital framework uh, for future investments in the city. In addition to the, that support role, we also provide technical assistance to a multitude of other community organizations, the city organizations, and certainly city initiatives, uh, strategic and the like. I think as you've probably heard from other departments and divisions as part, as part of these presentations, uh, FY 2021 was a challenging year for us, uh, and unlike any other, I think that the department had seen, um, and that was not only in not only related to obviously the COVID-19 public health crisis, but also uh, the unrelated or perhaps related development trends that we saw in the city, which were frankly unprecedented, I believe, in the context of our department and the vol the application volume. Uh, despite the intense workload, our frankly our biggest accomplishment of this year was keeping up with that case volume while also continuing to provide high quality customer service and frankly, keep the wheels turning within our volunteer boards and commissions and keep the process of development review uh, in motion. And we did so fairly effectively and, and continue to change as we move into a more normal world uh, with in-person and hybrid meetings. But we're pr really proud of that. And I wanna commend the team on the, the job that they did to support those boards and committees. Uh, in addition, we were able to continue our investment uh, both on a time and, and finance, from a financial perspective in uh, developing review software and coordinating with other departments that increase the efficiency and transparency of review processes within the city. Uh, and we would like to think looking at our review processes and the efficiency that we maintain throughout the year that those investments were worthwhile. Uh, we continue to meet the sort of compliance of our planning and, and zoning review schedule, again, in spite of those public health issues and certainly the challenges with our virtual meetings. And we're, we're really proud of that as we move into a new year with perhaps more, more normal, normal circumstances. In addition, the fruits of those labors produced things like the approximately 400 housing units that were created in the city of Nashua through the development review process last year. Uh, we're seeing this trend grow and certainly we're proud of the, albeit not our work directly, uh, the, the positive impact that will have in the community as we go forward. Further substantiating those activities are the strong development act, are the strong revenues that you see reported within our revenues in your budget packets. Uh, currently, as of year to date, we're at about 124% of the FY21 projected revenues. Uh, we projected about 173,000 and we're currently at 216,000. Again, an indication of that strong development activity. However, as we move forward in the new fiscal year, we are not projecting or proposing an increase in revenue, really for two specific reasons. One, unlike the building department, we have not uh, comprehensively updated our fees in any way. We're maintaining our fees moving forward for development review. And the second is that the market is frankly quite volatile and we're not sure what to expect in our new year. We've had a very busy year and we don't know what the future holds. And as a result, we are stabilizing our revenues moving into the next fiscal year. And I'm happy to answer any questions about revenues at this time. Any questions for Mr. Sullivan on revenues? Seeing none. Okay, we'll go on to appropriations on page 245. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, moving forward to the new year, we're excited, excited about a variety of things. Obviously, uh, working to implement the Imagine National Master Plan, and hopefully the subsequent code update that comes with that. Uh, I know my team is looking forward to that, and certainly uh, our appropriations at a fairly level uh, projection will maintain our support to that effort. Uh, additionally, we are planning to continue our investment in Civic Gov and uh, tech, uh, digital permit review. But again, those do not impact our proposed appropriations. And as, as a result, we're proposing actually a decrease in our overall appropriations moving into the new fiscal year. Uh, we have some minor modifications, particularly uh, in the discretionary lines, lines 53428 through 71, uh, 71900. 
Uh, but the primary modification therein is the modification to these cell phone stipends. We are moving towards a, a more dynamic access or telephone access for our employees. We've changed the way that we do business in the department, um, how we're offering access to meetings, and that necessitates us offering those stipends. You'll also see some underspending, I think, within the particularly the salaries, mileage, uh, professional development, and the printing lines. Those are direct result of some of the impacts on COVID, of COVID on our process in the last year. However, we're continuing to level fund those or with minor decreases heading into the new year. Uh, as a result, again, this represents a $25,000 decrease overall in the planning department budget moving into the new fiscal year. Okay, any questions relative to community development appropriations? Alderman Schmidt, did you want to? I, I did, I, I only needed to know uh, how many employees are in this department? So we have we have seven employees, including myself. So there are six that are sort of split between the, the zoning and planning tracks below me. Super, that's all I needed. Thanks so much. Of course. Any other questions? I will say, uh, Mr. Sullivan, that you've done a great job coming in a year short of drinking out of a fire hose, uh, both from a COVID issue and, and the amount of development that's going on. Um, having been involved in many of the planning and zoning meetings, it's amazing that those people go to the hours of the night that uh, they do. Uh, with all the cases they have, the caseloads, if people aren't aware, are, are, are very intense right now. Uh, so if that keeps up, your revenues may increase, but uh, I'm not sure we have enough land left to keep that up. <laughs> well, Alderman Dow, I just want to say thank you. I know that our volunteers certainly appreciate that comment, as do you know our team and myself. Certainly, I appreciate that. Thank you. So, uh, I did notice that, like you said, that the cellular phone uh, went up 3,600. Most everything stayed about the same. Uh, printing services went down. Um, so some of those things that went down were a result of changing the process a little bit because of what you've learned during COVID. I think we're, we're changing the way that we do business. And I know that's a, it's a cliche, but we are learning new ways to share information, both to the public and to the members of our boards and commissions that we staff, uh, i.e. not sharing and printing digital packets all the time, not printing all of our materials. And we're realizing some savings there. Uh, but also identify, you know, we're recognizing that that will potentially result in modifications elsewhere, like we're seeing in the cell phone stipend. Having been chair of uh, zoning in the past, I can remember we killed a lot of trees. So doing it digitally is uh, a lot better. Well, yes, Alderman Wilshire. Thank you. I would like to thank you as well, Mr. Sullivan. I think your presence here in Nashua has been seen and felt, and, and it's a positive change. So thank you, I, thinking outside the box, you know, bringing your budget in, you know, less than you, you needed to. <laughs> I don't know about needed to or not, but uh, thank you for everything you've done and everything you continue to do. I think you've been a great addition to that department. Thank you. Alderman Schmidt, did you have a follow-up? No, sorry, I just forgot my hand was up. I apologize. Okay. All right, are there any other questions? for planning and zoning. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you. All right. Um, next, we have uh, urban programs, Department 184, revenues on page 250, appropriations on page 250. Good evening, Carrie Skeeto, manager of the urban programs department. Um, our revenues are generally what we receive uh, through our grant funding. And so to explain urban programs a little bit, um, we are entirely funded by grant when that we do not have general fund. However, we do see a small portion of general fund through the Citizens Advisory Commission, which I'll talk about in a moment. Our department uh, takes grants from HUD, typically entitlement grants, sometimes competitive grants. And we roll those funds out into the community, primarily to low income populations or to agencies who are serving those populations. Um, so to sort of repeat the anthem that's been said this evening, uh, the last year was 
quite a strain on the department and on the staff. Uh, we received a lot of funding that came through various um, stimulus packages, the CARES Act, we saw two rounds of funding of community development block grant. And then just recently, we received another allocation through the ARP or the American Rescue Plan, and those would be home dollars that we don't know a lot about just yet. Um, so we've done quite a magnitude of work this past year, and we've done it without increasing our capacity staffing wise. Uh, I know other communities, because you could use portions of those funds for admin to brought consultants in or part-time people. Um, and we really thought it was important to get as much of that money directly into the community and not do that <clears throat> since our staffing had already been covered. Um, so just to give you an idea between the two rounds of CARES Act funding, we the first round funded 29 um, entities. And so about half of those were businesses owned by low-income individuals, and the other half were nonprofits. We then received a second round and rolled that out entirely to businesses where we focused on assisting um, what we call disadvantage, so what we think of as minority and women-owned businesses. And that was about 18 businesses that uh, we've just assisted. Those checks just went out. So in total, that represents about six times more the number of entities that we deal with in a regular year. And it was just over a million dollars, um, so substantially more uh, workload. And it was really good to see that go straight into the community. Uh, meanwhile, we kept up all of our regular services during um, the pandemic. And again, working with the clients that we have, and especially the direct interface through some of our programs, like housing we have, the lead paint program, um, we really had to come up with creative ways to serve the public because a lot of the population that we work with don't have the same ability, um, whether it be education or language, to access services the way that um, some other residents might be able to. So we pretty much um, did an anything goes policy. And if you could apply online, we took it that way. If all you could do was send us a picture with one page of each document to you know, send an application in. That's what we did. Um, we certainly did home visits and picked up documents, dropped off documents. Um, so you know, I really want to commend our team as well. Uh, they, they had a lot thrown at them this year. They were learning new technologies while trying to serve the public with new technologies. Um, and everybody did it with very little complaint. <laughs> and we understand the importance of you know, getting these funds out into the community. Um, I will say, in addition to the CARES Act funding, which I think was greatly important to the community in a time of crisis, was the award of our new lead grant. And um, that was the significant increase in our revenues compared to last year, because it's about two times more than what our previous grant was. Um, that's partly because HUD had more money to roll out. And it's also because we're gonna be doing a lot more units. Um, so we've already got that process going. We applied for it and were awarded it during the pandemic. Um, we actually applied at the very start of the pandemic. Uh, they did not extend the deadline. And again, the team worked great to, to get that done and work collaboratively remotely. And uh, the total grant is $4.7 million over three and a half years. And we'll do at least 206 units that started in mid-December. And right now we already have about 59 units underway. And um, we were attempting to hire a position to help with that, that grant because it is such a high production and it's, it's a lot for the existing staff to do. And um, you know, so we're, we're working on trying to, to fix the capacity that way, but we're, we're getting through. Um, thankfully, we have some really motivated people that, that like to see their numbers and their benchmarks achieved. So I don't, I'll, I'll take any questions on revenues. Um, that's our revenues in a nutshell. Are there any questions uh, for urban programs revenues? Alderman Doe. Oh, we'll share. I don't have a question. I just want to um, thank uh, Director Skeena for all her hard work going after these grants. I know it's a lot of work. Um, it, it, 
especially the lead grant because it's such a big grant and it does so much for the housing stock here in Nashua. So thank you for all the work you do and, and your, your department. Appreciate it. Thank you, I appreciate that comment. Okay, are, are you also going to, are there any other questions on? Yes, Alderman Lopez. Uh, yeah, well, um, so regarding your comment about uh, finding new ways to contact and engage people, um, and I'm not sure exactly whether this fits into this specific comment because most of what we've been talking about are the lead grants, but um, you've you've used a virtual platform to engage people with the um, Imagine Nashua um, effort, the, the citywide planning, and I have a suspicion that that has probably actually reached a more diverse demographic than traditional let's meet in City Hall on the third floor on uh, a school night, you know, and only the people who find out about that get to weigh in. So I think you've made really good, taken really good advantage of the, the opportunities uh, to use other platforms to reach people. And I'm wondering um, how you see your budget reflecting that and the um, upcoming Your Choice, Your Voice uh, projects. Will you be continuing to try to integrate those things? Or are you gonna have to, is funding that we have that was available for those efforts now gonna be redirected? If it's okay, I'll take that one. Director Marchand. <laughs> Thank you. So um, yes, in the 2022 year, we will be restarting the Your Choice, Your Voice participatory budgeting project in the Tree Streets neighborhood. We just had a kickoff. Um, we have an escrow from actually 2020 that we couldn't use because of COVID or 2019. Um, and so that has kicked off. We have $40,000 this year. You are right. We've used technology to interact with people in so many ways. And you're, we truly believe that we've interacted with so many more people um, through technology, whether it's virtual inspections from building and, and urban programs to just public meetings and discussions or small group meetings or having you know an easy time for a mom who's sitting on her playroom floor with a kid crawling all over her to attend meetings. Um, we've, we've been really, really lucky with that. Um, with participatory budgeting, we do believe that we really need to be physically in the community as much as possible because there is also a language barrier there. Um, and so uh, I wish I could speak Spanish <laughs> in my team. And we do have some Spanish speaking team members this year, but um, it does seem to us that we will do a little bit of a mix, but we are gonna, for that specific project, focus on in-person again. We are keeping hybrid for all of our meetings going forward. Um, for all the land use board meetings, as everybody said, there's been a heavy lift, but we've had more participation at planning board and zoning board meetings than ever before. So um, we fully intend, even though we will have a quorum present, to, um, to continue with a full hybrid option in the future and ongoing and all of our future planning and, um, and community outreach and public meetings will continue to have a, a hybrid option. I'm really glad to hear that because I think uh, you mentioned the mobility access, uh, people who can't get out of their homes as easily, the logistics, people who economically speaking might have to care for kids, can't bring them to a zoning board thing. Um, but then there's other uh, needs as well. Spanish is definitely one of them, but uh, things like sign language have really come to the forefront um, in terms of access where they were able, the deaf community was able to interact in very different ways than in the past, at least uh, in one direction, because when you're running things through Zoom and through um, apps and that kind of stuff, you can, you can run the subtitles and we don't have to have a translator right there. So there's still more to go, but I'm really glad that you're going to continue with the hybrid model because I think it, it definitely increases accessibility. And it's an example of one thing we don't want to forget from 2020. Thank you, Alderman Lopez. Um, are you also going to address the civic and community activities and human service agencies? Yes, I can. So that's the Citizens Advisory Commission, which was, I, I don't know how long we have to refer to it this way, but formally review and comment. Um, and probably about four years ago or so, it was revamped to Citizens Advisory Commission. That is a group of seven community individuals who are appointed as volunteers. Uh, they meet over the course of early January through March, um, usually about eight meetings or more if they need them. And they review about 40 applications from um, nonprofits within Nashua who are seeking funds. 
And that is primarily funded through general fund um, of the mayor's budget with a little bit of CDBG that also goes into it. 15% of the CDBG grant each year um, goes toward those activities as well. And so that committee makes those recommendations and then they're folded into the budget. Um, Alderman Karen is the appointed um, elected official who sits on that committee. And, um, you know, again, just to commend people as much as we can, they, they work very hard every year to review those applications. Each meeting is about three hours long um, at a minimum and they, very carefully and thoroughly vet those applications and consider uh, the greatest need. Where is the need in Nashua? What is the financial need of the agency? And who are um, the people that will be served? And so again, just to thank that group of volunteers uh, and they did that all by Zoom this year as well. Has the funding that's been available through Boston Billiards and Arena taken some of the pressure off of the allocations in that committee? I do believe that I don't know that it's taken the pressure off um, only because we continue to see costs rise and especially given the last year, the needs of, of people have been so substantial. Um, some of those nonprofits do get to be the beneficiaries of those nights through Boston Billiards and they include that in their budgets where possible. But, um, you know, just the, the gap between the need and what's available is so big. Okay. Thank Every you. bit helps. Any questions? from the committee relative to the review and comment. Excuse me, advisory board. <laughs> Been here a while. I don't see any, okay. Um, and the other is the human service agencies on page 70. questions at all on department 184 anyone no all right thank you very much for presenting thank you uh, the next department is 186 transportation revenues are on page 256 as well as appropriations good evening again sarah marchant um my our brand new transit administrator, Camille Correa, is coming up to speed very quickly, but four days is not enough to present next year. So, um, I am standing. I am standing in for her this evening, and um, I just want to thank also Camille Pattison, who has been the transit administrator for almost six years, um, who has done remarkable things with that department and brought in um, almost. $4 million in, in competitive grant funding on top of regular projects. So um, we are actively in the process of this next year of um, implementing some of those grants, the biggest one, which would be the transit center um, and some security and safety upgrades. Um, those are all nationally competitive 5339 grants um, and low no grants. We have our first um, fully electric um, vehicle and we're putting in some charging stations as well. So um, we should also commend our amazing mechanics team who has the luck of working on diesel, CNG, hybrid electric, and now fully electric vehicles as well. And they adapt and overcome and are amazing. They've become trained in all these vehicles and just a huge shout out to them for keeping at first a very old fleet running and now for being able to adapt to all this new technology as we embrace it as it comes forward. Um, so transit has um, is, is very level funded this year um, besides those larger grant projects. Um, something to note that um, that is that has risen that you can't necessarily see because of last year is that the first transit contract which was renegotiated um, has significant increases to remain competitive wage-wise. Um, I think you'll remember I was before you, I think in January over this, uh, you know, the school district raised school driver wages um, very significantly. And um, not only do we have a massive driver shortage with COVID, but um, we were not being competitive with wages either. And so um, thank you to your support. This does <laughs> include um, increases to our um, being contracted operator, contracted services lines, 
which is our operator first transit to provide um, a competitive wage to our drivers who have been at the very front lines through COVID this whole year as well. Um, overall, transit has done an amazing job. Um, we went from um, canceling fixed route service on a moment's notice to um, going to all on-demand service to then um, bringing our fixed, fixed route service back in phases. And um, we pivoted it a bit to be leaner and more efficient. Um, so we aren't exactly the same as we were before COVID came, but we think we are leaner and more efficient. Um, and we've introduced some new on-demand services, which is the wave of the future. We just have to find ways to do that economically. So we are excited about that in the next year and to bring back the most loved um, Hampton bus ride trips and the Polar Express. So um, I know we're doing two Hampton rides and they sell out instantly. Um, and, um, and so we're transit, the whole team has worked so hard through COVID to make all of this work. So unless there's any, I would be happy to entertain questions about the transit budget this year. Are there any questions relative to transportation? I do know, Director Marshan, that you're very excited to get started on this transit uh, building, that mm -hmm. project. Uh, it's been a haul getting the grant and the money in and the project uh, started finally. And uh, I'm sure you'll be over breaking a water bottle over the side of the building when it's christened. <laughs> Okay, if there are no other questions, then Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make the motion to table R21-142 by roll call. Please call the roll. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. Alderman O'Brien votes yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. We have five yeas, zero nays. Okay, motion carries and uh, the budget's back on the table. Thank you everyone for coming in and presenting this evening. Uh, you guys have a very busy and, uh, and fantastic department for the city and provide great service. So thank you very much. All right. Have a good night. Night. Good night. Good night, everyone. General discussion. Um, okay, no general discussion. Any public comment? I don't think I see anyone from the public on. Nope. So none. Remarks by Alderman? Um, I just want to put out there that uh, uh, we had a loss today of a, of a foreman in the middle school project working for Harvey Construction. Uh, and um, uh, it was uh, a sad day for, for Harvey Construction and uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to, to the family of, of Mike Halliday. Any other remarks by Alderman? Alderman O'Brien? Yeah, as uh, many of the citizens know, today was another one of our stretch of probably four in a row of uh, hot weather. But uh, unfortunately, National Fire Rescue did have a fire on this day. It went to three alarms on Concord Street, and uh, they did a yeoman's job of extinguishing and keeping it to the, uh, uh, within the attic area and everything. So uh, nice job by uh, another good city service. Thank you. All right, anyone else? No, and we have no reason for non-public. Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to make a motion to adjourn by a roll call. Please call the roll. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Jetty? Yes. Alderman Wilshire? Yes. Alderman O'Brien votes yes. Alderman Dowd? Yes. That's five yeas, zero nays. Motion carried, and we're adjourned at 8.04 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Nicely done. Thanks, folks. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Yep. Thank you, everybody.